everyone, Kodiak the Juggler here. Today we're going to be unboxing this guy right here, this motherboard, because we're going to swap out the motherboard that my girlfriend has on her computer, which came from a Dell XPS 8910. And we're going to upgrade it to this one. We're going to keep the uh, chip that was in there, and we'll go over that here in a bit. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have the Gigabyte Z270PD3 ultra durable motherboard. And this guy is going to take the place of what my girlfriend has inside her computer right now, which is the original motherboard from the Dell XPS uh, 8910. And this guy right here is going to be way better. So let's take it out of the box. All right, so first thing you have right here is uh, this looks like a SATA cable, S-A-T-A. -A. It's got the little angled piece, so that's nice. If we need it, we can use it. Take the board out of the box. See if we have anything else in here. Yeah, we have a couple of we have a couple of things. So we have the uh, uh, manual and uh, driver's disc, which we're not going to use. We're going to go online for that. Uh, I've got a nice little sticker that can go on her case if she wants it. Uh, let's see which is this. Oh, this is really cool. This is the little plug that's going to plug into your uh, front panel headers, which are which just makes it a lot easier. And then for the back of the case is a little in-out shield. All right, so the Gigabyte Ultra Durable. This thing is really pretty. Already I like it. Oh yeah, that's pretty. That is very pretty. Okay, so a couple of words on this. This I'm being I'm using just a little anti-static mat that you saw in the beginning. This is just a little cup for holding screws. I've got some extra screws here for, to screw it down. It's probably all I'll need. And then we'll need thermal paste. So I bought this. Let's see, Ar Arctic Silver Five. I bought this off of uh, Amazon. It's really cheap. So we'll just put the CPU right there. We've got slots for our RAM. Now we're going to reuse the RAM that she has that came with her Dell. We're going to reuse that for now, but then we're going to upgrade that with uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 3000 speed memory from Corsair. It's going to be Corsair Vengeance LPX. So we've got a little heatsink over there. We've got M.2. She has it. I don't know if she has one of those, but uh, we'll upgrade eventually to an M.2. But for right now, we have SATA. So we got the VRMs up here. It's very nice. This is a beauty. Let's check out the back real quick. That's pretty cool. And we have an aftermarket cooler that we're going to use. It's just going to kind of go right here. All right, so let's let's take a quick look at this guy right here. I think you'll want to see this. Not sure what this piece of paper is. Oh, this is a little connector. It tells you about it. That's kind of cool. Look at that. Shows you what you need to do with it. That's pretty cool. So anyway, this guy right here, usually it's up at the front. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, front panel in out and there's different things for each part of your front panel you've got your your power button your reset button um, and then you have USB over here so USB so this guy you just plug all the little individual pieces in here and they're all labeled which is very 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 nice and then you just plug the whole thing in so that's gonna make it so much easier than having to put each individual piece in the proper place in the right angle and we'll, we'll see this a little bit later as we move along so we got your serial ATA connectors here and here. We'll probably use this one because we're going to have a video card using this spot right here. It's a pretty big one. It's a Titan XP, which uh, happened to be given to us by a very, very dear friend who actually works for NVIDIA, which is pretty cool. But So we may or may not use this. I don't know. We might use this one or this one. But for right now, we only have one serial ATA drive that we're going to use. So now that we've had a look at this, we're going to put it out of the way so I can get the other computer. So let's put this on there. We're just going to push that aside so we've got our workspace open. Oof. All right, so here is the old case. This is a, an Intermax Ostrog Lite, I think it is. And set that down. Ugh. You always know when it's time to clean your PC when you upgrade anything. All right, so we're going to just Unscrew the back here. All right, well, this is kind of the fun part, really. When you get to take everything out, at least for upgrades. Now, we're going to keep this case for now, but eventually we're going to change her case out for something else. Something a little bigger that has a little bit better airflow. 
this. This one's good. It's great for a starter case. I mean, the case was only like forty some dollars. So, all right, I need to go get something to cut these. All right, so this is an invaluable tool. They're only a few bucks. Definitely get yourself one. Some decent cable management going on here. Decent. Right, we're just going to cut all these so that we can... We're going to need to remove this from the motherboard. This is the 8-pin... Uh, Oof, hair on there. It's the 8-pin connector. Let's see, let's not remove all of them yet, but we're going to need to remove the stuff that's connected to the motherboard. So let's just kind of go through and get those. Careful not to actually cut the wire itself. Just cut these little plastic things off. All right, so I'm going to flip the case around for now. Oh! Let's do it this way so I can actually see what's going on in here. This case has a little uh, Perspex style uh, window on the side. So here's a nice little shot of the inside. And what I'll do next is um, remount the camera so you can see a little better. Or change the camera's position so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so now that I have the computer open, what I'm going to start by doing is taking off the power cords, power connections for the Titan XP. That's what this is. This one actually requires two <laughs> sets of power. So you got an eight pin connector here and a six pin. So that comes from your PCIe. Um, one of the things we had to do with her Dell is put in a brand new power supply because the old one is pretty much built into the case, which is kind of funny. So we'll take that off. Uh, let's reach down here and take off the USB 3.1. Let's pull off the front panel connectors. And you can see here that this case doesn't have one of those little jigs, you know, that let you plug it in in one spot and plug in everything easily. So this is a little bit more difficult, but we'll walk through that in a little bit. Let's unplug this down here. This is your HD audio for the front panel connections as well. Just comes right off. And uh, if we reach up here is the one of the case fans. I think this was, uh, see, yeah, the back exhaust fan was plugged into the motherboard there. And up here is your eight pin connector for the CPU, which in this case is only four pins. So, you know, these are designed to break in half and uh, that's for that up there. Then you have your final connection, the uh, 24 pin connection. Now this was pretty difficult to get on here. So let's, let's do this. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the Titan X, Titan XP out. So let's undo this up here. Now this case has a little mechanism that holds all your peripherals in. So let's just undo that. And now we can unscrew the video card. This one takes up two slots. Like, like most modern video cards nowadays, they're all pretty big. You know, graphics cards are pretty big, so they'll take up two places. Some take up even three. Okay, so now you might not be able to see this, but there's a little... Let's see if I can angle it up. There's a little tab in the back that is holding this in place that you're gonna to have to push that till it kind of loosens it. So I'm gonna push on that while kind of pulling up slightly on the card and it just comes right out. See? There's the GeForce Titan X, the metal back plate, which is pretty nice. So I'll just set this aside. Now that we can get in here a little bit easier, what I'm gonna do is take out the RAM. So some RAM slots are designed to have these little push pins on both sides, which hold them in place. They just snap right in. This one has one on top and bottom. So I just push. So it comes out, comes right out pretty easy. And we should be able to reuse this in the new motherboard until we can get the proper RAM that we're going to use. This is still really good stuff. This is, you know, these are actually two four gig sticks using dual channel so that you can still use a higher quality RAM, but it's, we're going to upgrade from four to 16. So we just press those outward like that. It's pretty simple. Set those aside. And I think next what I'm going to do is well, I need to take this out. This was from the original case came with this uh, Wi-Fi 
little card that is actually connected to the uh, M.2 slot here, which is pretty cool. So we'll need to take that out. It's kind of just mounted to the top of the case. Just kind of stuck on there, no big deal. I'll just kind of undo those. Okay. And you see down here we've got two serial ATA cables connected. This one has an actual pin or kind of hinge connection that keeps it in there that you can't pull it out. So you've got to push that in first and then you can wiggle it out. This one doesn't have that, so you can just kind of wiggle it out. A little bit of force, pull it right out, no problem. Just be careful with it. Okay, so let me attempt, well, before I do that, okay, let me t attempt to get this out. This is usually not supposed to be very difficult, but this particular one was quite tough. Oof, man. Okay, so I've decided what I want to do next is I want to take this out. This is just the stock air cooler that came with this, um, this whole system from Dell. There's an i7 under here. It's a sixth generation, I think, so it's a few years old, but it's still a great processor. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this out. And this one is just designed to where all you have to do is just unscrew these. You don't have to worry about anything behind the motherboard. You don't really have to worry about that. So we'll just unscrew this. We'll do each one. There, it pops right off. <laughs> She's sticking. All right, so now that that's loose, before I pull it off, I'm going to kind of reach up here and unplug the connector that goes right into a specific connector for your cooler. Now I'm just going to take this and pull upward and it comes right off. And what we'll need to do, since we're going to, we're not going to reuse this cooler, I'm going to use an aftermarket cooler, which we'll go through that later, but uh, we will reuse the CPU. So what I'm going to need to do before I put it in the new one is I'm going to need to clean this off. I'm going to aim for about 90% or better isopropyl alcohol. Look for the higher percentage if you can. And we'll just use a Q-tip, just kind of clean that off. In fact, I think, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the motherboard out so that we can get to this cleaner a little bit easier and we can set the case aside for now. We'll just leave everything else. We're going to reuse the power supply, so we don't need to take that out. I'm going to keep this A-Data SU800 solid state drive in. That's her boot drive, but it also has some room for one or two games if she has games that she plays most often. That's what I do. But then also she's got down here in the drive cage, there's a hard drive. So that's the original hard drive that came with the Dell and it's got all her stuff on it. No problem. That's a, it's a great thing to do. You know, you have, have at least one of these as a boot drive, have windows on it. It's just so much faster and then keep your hard drives just to use as storage. All right. So let's take this out. Be careful, folks. <laughs> this one's in there a little tight, so I gotta go slowly. Be careful with it. This one way over here. So let's see if that's all of them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. I don't know. Okay. So now that we have our space in here, I'm going to actually use one of these. <laughs> Bet you didn't see that coming. So I have to actually sit this right in here and kind of pry it up a little bit. Of course, I made sure that this little, there's a little hook right here that holds it on to the connector and you want to make sure that that's not pulling. But just kind of had to pry it out a little bit <laughs> because it was that tight. So you've got to be careful with this, folks. And I don't really care if I ruin this because this motherboard is not going to be reused. It's kind of past its prime. So let's see if that did it. I shouldn't have undone those first. I should have done this part first, but I got ahead of myself. I apologize. All right, so there. Now that that's out, we can take this out. So I'm just going to kind of grab the bottom here, grab this part, pull upwards and outwards. I still want to be careful 
because I'm going to reuse this. All right, the next step is I'm going to remove the case from the work area, and then we're going to clean off the old CPU so we can put it into the new motherboard. Here's the old guy. All right, so first, let's get our alcohol. We're just going to use a couple of these, and then we're going to use some of these to clean off the remnants. Here we go. We're just kind of mop it up. It looks kind of mushy. That's a little bit gross, but it'll be fine. Just want to get all of that off of there if we can. Kind of make sure any of it's not stuck to that. Let's take a fresh, dry one. Kind of mop up what we can. I'm going to add a little bit more to a new one. Just a little bit. Just to make sure that I've cleaned that surface pretty thoroughly. And the good thing with the alcohol is it'll dry very quickly, so it's not going to be wet. Obviously, you don't want to try to put anything on here when it's wet at all. So next, we're just going to take this kind of clean off around the edge a little bit. So you can still see there's plenty left on there. Take the other side. Just kind of clean it off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want any excess kind of floating around. So just as you can see, there's still some left. Let's just clean that off. Use the fresh side, wipe off any excess around the edge. All right, so let's take one more. Because there's obviously going to be more on here because we're just going to change it, but no big deal. All right, that looks pretty clean. That looks pretty good. Next thing we're going to do is take it out of the old socket right here. So this is pretty much the same socket. It's just pretty easy to take this out. So what we're going to do is press down here, pull this outward. This comes up. Now, as you can see, this part goes under this screw. So you just pull up. The whole thing comes up. You can just move it out of the way. And now you have access to your CPU. You just carefully remove it. Hold it by its edges. Don't touch the inside. And we're just going to set this aside for now. Let's just set this right here. And now we can remove the old motherboard. I'm going to go ahead and close this again. See, just push that down. That goes under there. And that's ready to remove. So now that the old one is out of the way, let's bring in our new guy. Our beautiful new Gigabyte Ultra Durable. This is beautiful. Just kind of set it right in the middle. So there's a little bit of wobble, so you want to be careful with that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the RAM. And to do that, we will need to know where we're going to put our two sticks. So inside here, we'll find it. You need to know because the user's manual will tell you how to install the RAM to get the best out of it. Since we're using two sticks and even the new set of RAM is going to use two sticks, we need to set it in the two specific ones that will allow for dual channel. So let me go find it. Okay, here we go. So right here he says installing memory. So we're going to read in here where it says, we're going to read in here where it says to install dual channel memory. Okay, so this one's pretty, pretty obvious. It's pretty easy. So if you're going to use two modules, which we are, you just kind of stagger them. So what you want to do is refer to this diagram to show which one is which. So we're using two and four. So we're going to use these two right here, these two, because these two are one and three. So it's sometimes you put it in two opposite ones like this, these two, or these two, or you put them in like in this particular motherboard, these two, or these two. Just make sure you read the instructions. Okay. So now we're going to install this RAM. Now this is just going to be put in place for now. We're going to change it out when we get it. We just don't have it at the moment. And so a lot of people do that. I, I did that with previous computer builds where I didn't have the budget for everything all at once. So I upgraded what I could, and then I eventually went to bigger RAM. So there's only one way you can put this in here. Now you see there's a little tooth right here, or a key, and there's a key in here as well. You can only put it one way. If you do it this way, the key is not going to fit. It's not going to line up. So you do it this way. This is how you're supposed to do it because now the key lines up. So I'm just going to put this into the slot and go straight down carefully like that. Now let's just push straight down and this will snap into place. Okay. And you kind of go back and forth. You do not want to go back and forth this way. Not like that. No, only this way. So push on this side, push on that side. 
don't do any sway back and forth. That would be very dangerous. So let's open this one. And we're going to install the second bit of RAM. There's only one way you can do it. Go straight into the slot like this, push straight down on both sides. There, and both of these snapped, and now the RAM is installed. So the next thing we can do is we can put the CPU in place. So what we gotta do is pull this out, same way we did the other one. Let's just lift this up, and you can leave this on here for now. Now, your CPU can only go in one way. Just like with this, there's a key on here. And with this particular one, there's in the bottom right hand corner or bottom left hand corner, there's a little arrow. And then there's a little arrow corresponding to that down here. You see this arrow design right there? That that's the way you orient it in there. And this just happens to be the text is facing upward, just like this text is facing upward for you. You can see it like that. So you just push it right in there. Easy peasy. And there's little notches around here that help orient it in place and it's not going to go anywhere. Just, just easy like that. It doesn't take any effort. Now this goes down, make sure it goes under here, push forward. And what's going to happen is when you push down on this to go under here, this will pop off. So you push down using this little arm that came right off and there you go. And this gets removed and now your CPU is installed. It's very safe. It's not going anywhere. So the next thing we can do is we can put this, now there's a couple things we can do. We can either put the, uh, we can install the fan assembly now and then put it into the case, or we can put it into the case and install the fan assembly. This is probably a better idea to do it now because we might meet with the aftermarket fan. We're probably going to need to put something on the back as just to keep it in place. So we might need to do that. So I think we'll do that next. Okay, so for cooling, I'm going to add this Hyper T2 air cooler from Cooler Master. And this actually didn't fit on the Dell computer, unfortunately, but it will fit on this. Okay, so we're ready to install our air cooler. Um, I already put the mounting legs in here. You always got to take this off <laughs> before you put it on. Take that off, get it out of the way. Now this is going to go, I'm going to mount it this way to where the air is coming in and then we'll be exhausted out the back. So next thing we need will be the thermal paste. Now, you really don't need a lot of this. You just need about, uh, I'd say like a grain of rice maybe. So just a little bit, about that much. That's all you need. It's really not much. Now the way this is designed, so this will need to plug in right here to the CPU fan. But for now, all we have to do is just kind of push this down and all four of these will just kind of press right down in to their little respective holes here. So let's just go straight down, orient that, orient that. Are they all in place? They are all in place. Push down. You hear that snap? Gotta get up to do this. Snap. Easy peasy. There's the snap. There's the snap. So now this is firmly in place. It's not going anywhere. And we'll need to route this cable underneath very carefully. <laughs> Now, usually you would put the RAM in after the, actually, I don't know. You might not put the RAM in after because the RAM might be too big. In fact, that's a good thing to think about. I might need to mount this to the opposite side and draw air through rather than push air through. If, you know what, we can actually take these and put them out here. It's one, two or three or four with this motherboard. So let's do that. So we have more space to work. Just push that out of the way for now. Push these out. Till it comes up, go straight up. Let's open all of them and then go all the way to the outside. Let's just put that in there, straight down until it snaps. Let's do the same for this one. Pull this out till it opens up and then go right over here. Straight down, two snaps. Okay, so that's nice and tight and we can close these. It won't really matter. So now we have more space. And this is still in dual channel on this motherboard. So now what I'm going to do is very carefully move this to over here. Let's plug it in. 
There's only one way it can go because there's a key type thing right here. So that gets plugged into the motherboard. All right, so that's secure. Let's make sure this is kind of floating and not touching anything. All right, so we've got our rammer ins installed. We've got our cooler installed. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it back into the computer. Okay, so we've got the case back on the table. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on the IO shield. Because the Dell didn't have a removable IO shield, it stayed on the old case. So luckily we have this new one. So I'll put that on there now. Now, this goes this way. Just check it with the motherboard. Yep, all those got on there. So, just angle that in there. I gotta move the power cable out of the way. Move the fan cable out of the way. There it goes. Just check the back, make sure it's snapped into place and you're good to go. Now, we'll leave this up here. Now we can take the motherboard, carefully slide it in. Before we do that, um, so motherboards have standoffs right here, what you're at, or the case has a standoff where the motherboard's gonna screw in. And this particular motherboard's not as wide. See, this is, where I had them previously on the outside because it was a large, it was a wider motherboard, but this one's a little smaller. So I located them where they needed to go. And then we'll very carefully bring this in here. We're going to have to slide it under here like this. So let's take this out of the way, go down slowly, line up the in out in the back, kind of angle it a little bit and slide it into place. There we go making sure that fits flush and then we can screw them in slowly. Not all the way in, but we'll just put a couple of them in for right now. Now let's see, which other one do we wanna do next? Let's do this one up top. That's in place, that's in place. That one, we got one up here and one in the back, and I think that's it. Just had a bad screw there, so I'm gonna make sure to throw that one away. <laughs> All right, now our final one is way up here, which is nice that I have this longer screwdriver because that helps for getting in the tight spots. All right, now check to make sure everything is tight and secure, not too tight, it doesn't have to, <laughs> It doesn't have to clamp down, it just has to be tight enough. And it's not going to go anywhere. There we go. And now we can consider what needs to go in next. So we can plug in the main power cord right here. We need to kind of move it around a little bit. That just snaps right into here. Make sure it's secure. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth. There, that's nice and secure. We've got our front panel audio, which we'll need to make sure we maintain the proper input. So we can figure that out with the motherboard manual to see where it gets plugged in. It's a little bit hard to see from here, but it's probably this one down here, but we'll make sure. Last thing we'll do is we'll put in the Titan XP. We'll put that in. So what do we got here? We've got an angled one, which I think this is for the hard drive. Since it is at an angle, let's move it up to here so we can plug it in. This one is at another angle, so just pull this out. There's some excess behind the motherboard, not a problem, or behind the case, so there's plenty of excess here. Shape it into place a little bit. So this is secure, but not too tight or too loose. Make sure they're still plugged in. Now we've got our, what is this? This is our PCI Express. 
So this is for the video card. These two are for the video card. Now we have this is the front panel connections, which we will connect using our little bridge sort of thing, which is really nice to have. <laughs> Now the hard part is getting up here and plugging in the CPU power, which it looks like this motherboard is going to require the full eight pins, which I have up here. We'll just have to connect them and put it right in. So we'll do that off camera because that's going to be difficult. <laughs> and then we'll plug this into the chassis fan connection. And actually while we're here, we can put the Titan XP in next. This is pretty easy. So this will go right here. So it looks like we're going to have to change which ones are taken out. We're going to have to take this one out. And with this case, once they're out, they're out. They stay out. So this one's going to have to stay out. No problem. So these two will be open and then we'll put the graphics card in. Okay, so let's get rid of this one. All we have to do is kind of push in, bend it a little bit. It will come out on its own. That's how that is. A lot of times they're designed to where you just unscrew them and pull them out. But this one is just there. Once it's gone, it's gone. Not a problem. So let's take the Titan XP very carefully, put it into place. Make sure it slots in and then straight down. Did you hear that click? Now you know that is connected and then we'll screw these in right here on the side to make sure it stays in place and doesn't wobble back and forth. That will hold it nice and secure. Awesome. Well, that was a big failure. <laughs> Luckily, I have magnetic drivers. That helps so much. You have no idea. <laughs> All right, so that's nice and tight in there. Very secure. Now we can plug it in. So I'll have two plugs. An eight pin. That just snaps right in place carefully. And then the six pin. This requires two separate cords from your power supply. With this particular card, you really do need a good amount of power to it. So you can't skimp. I think this is a 650 watt power supply. It should really be more like an 800 watt power supply, but it's very, very efficient. It's very high quality. It's a good brand. So, so we have our serial ATA connected with this SU800 uh, solid state drive. That's where the uh, OS is booting from. This is our boot drive. Make sure everything's still secure. And then we have this one going to the hard drive in here. It's a 7400 RPM hard drive. It might even be 10,000, that's pretty nice. So we've got USB 3.0 for the front. We have got 24 pin power. We've got our two um, four gig sticks of RAM, which are gonna be 16 gigs once I swap them out when we get them in the mail. We've got our cooler connected. The airflow is gonna go this way. So we've got a fan up in the front that will bring air in, which is actually plugged into the motherboard right down here, which is nice. It'll send air through here cool the CPU out the back. It'll be exhausted. We just have to, uh, we can route this and cable manage that. We'll probably put it up here out of the way, tie it up. Got our GeForce GTX. That's our Titan XP uh, with the power cables connected. So that's connected. We've got USB 2.0 for the front. And then we've got our front panel audio. And then this lovely thing right here, that was kind of a pain, but we did it. Uh, put, put in the front IO panels, all the buttons, which are up here on this case. And then we have the CPU power connector was plugged into the top. That was the hardest part because getting up in here was not easy and the top of this case doesn't come off. So keep that in mind when you're buying cases. If you don't have small hands or you don't, you want to use an air cooler, even, even a water cooler would be kind of hard to get in here. So you've got to be <laughs> aware of that. It was really tough to get in there and plug that in, but it is connected. So we got our hard drives connected. We got our power. We've got everything connected. This should be good to go. So we'll finish cleaning up here, make sure the back is all secure and make sure there's some good cable management in the back and we're ready to go. All right, success. That's very awesome. So we still have, well, the computer turned on, so that's good. So let's open up CPU Z or CPU Z just to check to make sure everything is good. 
Okay, so Core i7 is the 6700. It's a few years old, but that's all right. Skylake architecture. Everything seems to be working. That's good. Let's go to the main board. Aha, gigabyte. Nice. So it's working. We got PCI Express times 16. That's always good to know. Memory, DDR4, 8 gigabytes. Oh, it's in single channel. I'm going to have to figure out why it's in single. You know what? We probably have to go into the BIOS and update it for dual channel. But we will definitely do that. We'll, up, we'll go through and make sure, of course, we'll have updates as well. So we'll do that, make sure we're good. Graphics, Titan XP, that works too. All right. So that's very, very good. I'm very happy about that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed watching this video where we took a pre-existing motherboard that came out of a Dell XPS 8910 and we replaced it with a Gigabyte Z270 PD3 motherboard. And I hope to catch you in the next video where we're going to upgrade the RAM to 16 gigs. So we'll see you then. And here's the next video. Now this will just be the installation of the new RAM, which is a kit from Corsair. This is the Vengeance LPX 16 gigabyte kit of 3000 speed RAM, and it comes with two sticks. And this time it'll be installed correctly. But keep in mind, the previous RAM was installed in adjacent slots, and it still works, but it limits it to single channel. And here it is. It's got the built-in heat spreaders on it, and it looks great. Now, as you can see, I installed the new RAM in the color-coded gray slots, which enables dual channel mode, so that'll take full advantage of the RAM's speed and capability. So thank you again for watching this very long video. Please give it a like if you found it helpful, and I will catch you in the next video. Take care.